Well, we're obviously looking forward to the first game. Uh, I'm sure the players are very much excited about um, having a game to play, uh, trying to create an identity as a team, uh, create value for themselves individually for how they compete, how they play. Um, I think the big thing, which I've said before in first games, is you got to be able to play the next play. Sometimes unexpected things happen in first games, things that you weren't prepared for. Um, so I think it's really important that everybody can keep the right mindset. I also think that, you know, from this time on, you know, mental focus, mental practice, mental preparation is really a big part of eliminating errors uh, in a game. Uh, we can't practice that much more on the field, uh, but we can practice a lot mentally. And I think that can have a huge impact on, you know, how we can play and how we get off to um, what we hope is a very good start against a very good Miami team. So, um, you know, we always look forward to playing in Atlanta. It's a great venue, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, people in Atlanta have always been great. Um, you know, Gary Stoken and that group have always been really great for us and treated us very well. So we're really looking forward to the opportunity. Okay, with that, Coach, we'll start with Mike Rodak. Mike, go ahead. Just how much of a reacclimation period might there be for players just having played in front of smaller crowds last year, now having 100% capacity and, and full crowd noise? Well, I think, you know, anytime you're playing when you're a player, uh, crowd noise does make a difference in the game, uh, which we didn't have to deal with a whole lot a year ago. Uh, so a lot of the players that have played, you know, last year, they'll have to get reacclimated to that. But I think um, being able to communicate uh, with hand signals and uh, not as much relying on verbal communication is always very important. I mean, we spent today, you know, practicing that way with noise. We'll spend tomorrow practicing that way with noise. Um, so I think there is, you know, some adjustment that players have to make. It's something that they have to get used to. And we try to do that by simulating it in practice as much as we can. We'll go to Nick Kelly with Tuscaloosa. Nick, go ahead. You mentioned about a week ago that, uh, Jalen Armour Davis is a little banged up. Where is he at right now? Health wise? He's doing great. He's, uh, really good. hundred percent. No problem. Um, looking forward to playing. We will go to Charlie Potter. Charlie, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Just uh, wanted to ask about the what you thought about the job that Rhett Lashley has done at Miami as their offensive coordinator, and if you see any similarities in, in what they did last year to, to what he did when he was at Auburn. Uh, I think he's done an outstanding job. You know, they're very productive on offense. They've got really good skill players. Um, they spread you out. They do some things that are, you know, similar to Auburn, but I think their tempo is even greater than – um, you know, what Auburn is uh, in terms of how fast they play uh, and how that can affect defensive players. And it's also a difficult preparation. Uh, and I think they um, are very well tied together in terms of, um, you know, what they do in a running game as well as what they do in a passing game. So I have a lot of respect for, um, you know, him as an offensive coach. And uh, I think he's done an outstanding job with the players that he has at Miami. We'll go to Michael Casagrande. What stands out about the way Miami plays defense, their secondary, their style, and the, the experience I have back there? Yeah, they're very aggressive, um, you know, in the way they play. Um, they run a lot of corner cats. They play a lot of clamp coverage. Not that I expect anybody to know what that is, uh, but their corners can be very aggressive. And um, they play very aggressive in the back end. They play man-to-man. -man, um, and... Um, you know, they're, they're very aggressive in their style on defense. Um, and I, I think, you know, that's contributed to their success in the past. And we're going to have to do a good job of executing against some of the pressure things that they do uh, so that, you know, we eliminate negative plays, which is what they're trying to create. We're going to Cecil Hart. Cecil? Coach, um, I know this isn't something you pay a lot of attention to, but your last three – um, starting quarterbacks are all starting in the NFL this weekend. And just your um, your thoughts, how, how does that happen? And, and what, what are your thoughts about those three guys? Well, I think all three of those guys did an outstanding job when they were here. i um, happy to see that they're getting an opportunity to play and start at the next level. Um, I never really had uh, any issue thinking that they would not have successful NFL careers. Uh, now they have the opportunity to show, you know, how successful 
uh, they can be. Uh, they all worked hard. Um, they worked hard and made tremendous improvement while they were here. Uh, I think it's a reflection on some of the really good quarterback coaches that we've had here and some of the good offensive coordinators that we've had here to help them continue to develop as players. Um, so I'm excited. Uh, I don't get to see him play on Sundays, but I'm excited to certainly, you know, find out how well they do. And uh, we wish them all the best and the best of luck. And um, I'm very hopeful that they all do extremely well. We'll go to John Zeter with the AP. Uh, Coach, you got obviously some young receivers and some receivers stepping into different and bigger roles. How, how have those guys as a group uh, just looked so far? I think, you know, some of them um, have done really, really well, um, and some of them have to be a little more consistent. Uh, and I think, you know, it's a development process for young players to uh, consistency and performance is really what defines success. And I think, you know, sometimes they're not sure what they're doing, so they're not playing fast. Uh, sometimes they get impatient and cut things short. Uh, but they also have showed that they have, you know, a lot of upside in terms of their ability to uh, make a really positive contribution to the team. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a work in progress. And I think uh, with all these guys, you're going to see some very bright signs. And uh, I think sometimes, you know, there's going to be things that we can identify that we still need to work on to help their development. Okay, we got time for two more. We'll go back to Charlie. Yeah, Coach, just want to ask you about the long snapper position. You, you obviously had a consistent guy there with Thomas Fletcher moving on, but what have you liked from, from Neyland Hibbett? What have you seen from that guy? He's good. He does a good job. He's got good velocity on the ball. He's accurate. He's fairly athletic in coverage. Um, you know, he's done a good job for us. So I'm, I'm very pleased with him and a lot of confidence in him. We'll finish up with Joe Gaither. Good. Joe, go ahead. Coach, Miami enters the game uh, with – probably the most experienced offensive line in the country returning from, from the past years. What do you emphasize to your defensive front heading into a, a game with, with, against a unit that's so experienced? Well, these guys are obviously a very good unit. Um, you know, we've got some returning guys up front too. Uh, I think, you know, the big thing with these guys is they have very good skill players to go with it. They have a very good offensive line. Uh, all the starters are back. Um, and I think we're going to have to play with a lot of discipline up front. Uh, run and pass because the quarterback's got a great ability to extend plays as well as run. Um, so, and their offensive line is going to be a challenge for us to be able to, um, you know, get the kind of rush and push the pocket like we need to, you know, to affect the quarterback. So uh, they also have a very good running team. Um, they had great balance, you know, last year, uh, which is obviously a, a tribute to the offensive line. So, um, you know, our guys, need to be up for the challenge, no doubt.